-hmm. that my question to Christians now is that you are a Christian, which means to be Christ-like, that's your faith, right? What was the faith of Jesus Christ? He would yep. be pointing up. Even my own daughter at nine years old would look at me and be like, that makes no sense. As Jesus grew up, he learned more and more about God. His... Jesus is God. How can he learn more and more about himself? They had the Moroccan players prostrating, prostrating not down. only when they won, but when they lost. We have run God is named Allah, Allah And his final messenger is Muhammad Peace be upon him This is our religion, Islam, Islam This is the Deen Show Girl, I love you very much for all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to Yas, and I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam. Welcome to the Dean Show, the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, welcome to the Dean Show, I'm your host, and guess who I have with me here? It's one of the original guests. Talking about a very important topic. Back then it was SD, and today we're in HD. 4K, isn't it? Yeah, 4K now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa You're all grown up now. We're all grown we're up. Grown up. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's what? been, what, 16 years since the first appearance on the Dean Show? I, I cannot tell you how many times, just recently, I had a Croatian, or was he Serbian? He approached me. This is in the mosque and MEC in Chicago. And he came up and he said, you know, I watched this show that you did. And he said, I watched that top 10 reasons yeah. why Jesus wasn't God. He was on his quest searching, yeah. you know, searching purpose of life. And that came across and in his search. And that was a trigger point mm -hmm. that really stuck with him. And he actually he accepted Islam. MashaAllah. Yeah, you never know. You do something 15, 20 years ago, how it trickle effect uh, of it being out there. That was the whole beauty of why we started doing all this stuff in the first place. Like we were talking about earlier today, you know, that I started my da'wah on MySpace. That's where, you know, as first, because I knew is the more you put out there, the more, you know, opportunity people have to come across it. And we might be dead in our graves and somebody finds a video that we've done and they accept Islam. So it's, it's all a way of putting out good deeds that could be, it's, it's, it's like throwing out a bunch of fishing nets. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And you never know when a fish is going to come along and hit it. Yes. So uh, how's, uh, how's everything? How's uh, everything been with Alhamdulillah, you? Alhamdulillah, we are always good as Muslims, you know, the world is uh, rapidly changing and evolving and, and um, you know, we have to do our, our best to, to, to continue to be on the front lines of, of helping people understand the truth about their purpose and their nature. Because one of the things is, you know, Islam is to teach us about our true purpose and nature, right? That's, that's the whole point, is for us to understand who we truly are in retrospect of the Creator and the creation. And we live in a world now that is, it's entire, it seems like the entire job of the world now is to confuse people about who they are, what their identity is, pronouns changing weekly. Like we, nobody knows who they are anymore. And as Muslims, this is where we are able to put out that flag and be that hold fast of who we are as human beings, that we are servants to the creator. He created us perfectly. He created us exactly how he wanted us to be. We don't need to be anything other than that. We serve and worship Him, and then that's how we live a beautiful life in this world and the next. So I think, you know, we have an even greater opportunity now to tell people about Islam, but the odds are becoming more and more stacked. Mm -hmm. It's just reality. And we're not the only faith group that's seeing that. Mm -hmm. You know, identity politics are at play everywhere. Let's go back to this key figure that now there's a divide there, but it seems like people are, from the statistic, they said that 52% of Christians don't believe Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. And that's when we first met, we talked a lot about Jesus. Yeah. We talked about yep. Islam in the Bible, and then you did the top t 10 reasons why Jesus is not God. Yep. Um, has anything changed from those top 10 there now that we have, you know, opportunity to meet again? Is there, when you approach Christians, you know, do you still use those, the same talking points there with this or have you? I mean, the, the top 10 was, was a very zealous attempt to be very specific. Um, I, you know, as you get older, one of the things we learn as we get older, we learn how to, to, to be more pragmatic about yeah. our approaches to certain things. So I, I, 
and more of an approach. I've always taken the approach that the more you get people to think on their own, the more easy they are to come to valid opinions. You know, I mean, self-discovery is unlike being anything else. It's not like me telling you something. It's asking questions. We said that when we just went and visited uh, the, the, the Dean Center not too long ago. We need to do this for the future of our children, the future of our great country, the future of mankind. This is your brother Rathman ibn Farooq and I've got a very important message. Alhamdulillah, our brother Eddie is setting up the Dean Center, not just the Dean Show, but the Dean Center, a full Dawa Academy, a Masjid, a Dawa Center in America, the first of its type, the, a, a groundbreaking project. And I want everybody, as I'm supporting it, I want everybody to support it so we can take the Dawa to the next level. We need the Dean Center, please support it. That my question to Christians now is that you are a Christian, which means to be Christ-like, that's your faith, right? What was the faith of Jesus Christ? That's, uh, that, was, that really stuck with me. So you're, you have faith in Jesus. You have faith well, in Jesus. What was his faith? What was Jesus' faith? Was his faith in himself? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when you go and look at the Bible, and I, and I did a video on my YouTube not too long ago about this, why I left Christianity, because it really boiled down, boiled down to three points, the personhood of Jesus and the validity of the Bible. Without those two things, Christianity is literally just falls into nothing. Even, even Paul himself said, without Christ crucified, our faith is in vain. Like we had nothing. So I encourage Christians now more to, what was the faith of Jesus? Like now you can tell me what your faith is, your pillars. I believe in Jesus Christ, died on the cross. That, okay, so if your faith is completely dependent upon Jesus' crucifixion, what was his faith? For his entire life until this point... What was his faith? There's going to be a knee-jerk reaction. Someone's going to say, well, that's obvious. He was Christian because I'm Christian. He was Christian. So he was himself. To be Christian means to be Christ-like, to be like Christ, to be a follower of Christ. Just like Muslims, we don't call ourselves Muhammadans. We don't call ourselves followers of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We follow his religion. His religion was Islam. So we are Muslims, just like he was. So if you look at the faith of Jesus Christ, he was asked. He was asked simply about his faith and it was actually a trick question when he was asked what is the greatest commandment because really in reality there's no there's no greatest commandment they're all equal um and he said i can't tell you the greatest commandment without telling you the first commandment the first commandment is hero is with the lord your god is one uniquely one love your the lord your god with all your heart with all your might with all your strength love your neighbor like you love yourself he said all of the law of god and all the prophets hang on these principles that was the faith of christ so i asked christians that was his faith is that how you define your faith? Mm -hmm. If not, then there is a problem. There is a problem. You are not Christ-like. Because that term didn't exist at that time. It Christian did not exist. Didn't. No. It did not exist. It did not exist. That's a really important point of information, something to have someone During like his life, think. nobody called themselves a Christian. Yeah. His followers did not call him, the, the, the disciples did not call themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. So what were they? So what's the next step? Usually when you get people to think about this and then they're like, it's like an aha moment. Where do you take it from there? I tell them that the faith of Jesus was the same as the faith of Moses, was the same as faith of David, was the same as faith of Abraham, is to believe in one God alone. That is the core tenet foundational principle of God. And it has always been the same. And I tell them, forget about you know what, 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 what is written in the New Testament and Paul. Go all the way back to the beginning. Start Genesis, Deuteronomy. Look at what God says about himself. He's one. He's uniquely one. He's jealous. You know, he does not like it to anything other than him to be worshipped. That is very simple across the board. That is the faith of Jesus. That is the faith of Muslims. We have not changed anything. That's the whole point is that nothing changes. And this is the theory that we as Muslims have about God is that he is does not change. Mm -hmm. If God ch can change, we're all doomed. You know what I mean? He is the one absolute, like, stable factor in the universe, is that he is who he is, and that does not change. Therefore, as a Muslim, I have the same faith that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, had when he walked this earth. I love the Lord my God with all of my heart, with all of my might, and all of my strength. That is, in Islam, called uh, the rights that belong to Allah. The rights that belong to him, Salah, Zakat, Siyam. You know, these are the pillars, they're given to God. And then second pillar of Islam, which was the second pillar Jesus taught, you love your neighbor like you love yourself. Meaning you treat other people the way you want to be treated. This in Islam is known as the rights that belong to the creation. And that is the entirety of the religion of Islam. I tell people that. If you take Islam as a concept and you wanted to divide it into two main categories, those two main categories are the rights that belong to Allah, God alone, 
and the rights that belong to creation. And that is Islam and that's what Jesus taught. So I get them on that, that, that thought process that if you want to be like Jesus, then you have to be like Jesus. You can't, you can't go and be like Paul or be like any of these other disciples or your preacher. You have to look at what Jesus taught, what he preached, what, what were the commands he gave to the people around him at his time, and you follow those. It reminds me of a verse from the Rebatum Guard of God Almighty, Allah, the Quran, when you mentioned the prophets where uh, Allah is saying, God Almighty is saying, the Creator is saying that uh, regarding Abraham, that he wasn't a Jew or a Christian, but he was one who submitted his will to the one God. Yeah, he and he was known as Hanif. Hanif. Hanif, which means like purity of faith for one God, like uprightness, purity, like he gave everything absolutely to God alone that belonged to him. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that is the religion of, of, uh, of, of all the prophets. He didn't worship Jesus. No, for sure. He didn't worship uh, himself or nope. the creation or anything. He worshiped like Muslims do, like we do today. The creator. The creator. Allah. That is it. And there is only one creator and everything else other than that is part of his creation. Mm -hmm. And those two cannot be equal. No one would say, no one with the right mind who thinks properly would say that the creator is like the creation. These two things are, are, are separate. This is where Paul had to break this idea and say that God became a man, you know, uh, uh, Christ became flesh, you know, like us. And but you, if you look at it realistically, there's the creator and there's the creation. These two are not equal and they're not the same. Even Jesus said it, that I, I do nothing of my own. Like I don't have any power except that which the Father has given me. He works through me. The miracles that, 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 he, that I do, I don't do them by myself. So it's, it's, it's really comes down to, to stripping away preconceived notion, notions and looking at the faith of Jesus Christ. And, and, and this is also part of Islam and Muslims. I've been now, the, you know, it's been 17 years since we did these videos almost. Um, even with Muslims, we have unfortunately a lot of preconceived notions about religion that become very culturally ingrained into the faith. And for me as a, as, as a, a convert, revert, wherever you want to say it, I have been able to see outside that paradigm. So it's, the same concept is that Islam is pure and simple and logical to worship God alone and follow his commandments. Everything other than that is, is, is not part of the religion. And therefore, we strip all of that away. You find what? Worship God alone. That's it. Give God his rights. Give human beings their rights and, li and, and, and live and let live. Um, so that's, that's kind of been my more pragmatic approach towards Christianity now, rather than you know, just taking attacks at, at the Bible, taking attacks at Paul, they get very defensive. And, and defensive people are usually not very receptive. So it's more of just asking them questions of, what do you, what do you, what do you believe in? What is your faith? And then what was Jesus' faith? Mm -hmm. See if you, the two are congruent with one another. What are you happen to, what a lot of people come to find out that your faith is Pauline. That's when you get down to yeah, the crux that, of the matter. That the crux of the matter is the only person who taught your faith is Paul the Apostle, mm -hmm. who never met Jesus, who never walked with him, who never talked to him, none of these things. But this is not the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ was to worship God alone. Mm -hmm. That was it. He himself was still considered, considered himself a practicing part of the faith of the children of Israel at the time, which was monotheism. He still went to the synagogue. He still he fought against all of the things that were going on. He never established, he didn't go and build a whole new building call people into it and say, worship me. This does not happen. You would figure, you would figure if your entire salvation, right? In the entirety of your salvation relied on you worshiping Jesus Christ. Then why for 33 years of his life did he never build a building, call people in there and say, worship me and you will go to heaven. Mm. Like this makes no sense. God is not, the, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Why did it take at least 13 to 15 years later for Paul to start teaching us this doctrine. Like, what, 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 this makes no common sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It just does not sound logical. The faith of Jesus was to worship God. So if you want to be Christian, which means to be like Christ, then you would worship God. Simple as that. That's deep. I mean, it's something straightforward. It's easy to digest, easy to understand. And uh, inshallah that people can go ahead and, you know, I feel that a lot of times is if a person is, is open-minded and they're sincerely looking for the truth, because the, the innate nature of the human re being rejects this idea of God being a man, yep. you know, this whole concept of the Trinity doesn't make sense, uh, God dying for your sins, coming down to earth, and a lot of these things are very emotional. God can die at all. Yeah. And, and, and 
this is the problem is a lot of Christians think that Muslims are, are like reject Jesus. And that's, that's so contradictory to what we actually believe. And actually, in order to be a Muslim, you must have full faith in Jesus Christ. That is a pillar of our religion. If someone were to come and say, I'm Muslim, but I don't believe in Jesus, then the, the latter statement contradicted the first one. You cannot be a Muslim without full faith in Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, you know, his uprightness. You, can't, you cannot be a Muslim without these things. So we actually are people who affirm Jesus Christ. But to think that on the day of judgment, that God is going to punish people for worshiping him alone. That makes no sense. It makes no sense mm -hmm. to think that, okay, let, let's just let's, let's set a hypothetical scenario. I'm a Muslim. I go in front of God on the day of judgment. Why did you do what you did? I worshiped you because alone because that's the way uh, I saw Abraham worshiped you. That's the way I saw Noah worship you. That's the way I saw David worship you. That's the way I saw Jesus worship you. And you're going to tell me that God is going to throw me into eternal fire for worshiping him alone. This makes no sense. It's, it's so contradictory. But I can prove to you that God says he will punish those who worship anything other than him. It's in the very first law of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, I, the Lord your God, am one and have no other God before me. Make thyself no graven images. Worship, don't worship anything else other than me. I am a jealous God. So I can have much proof to that, but there is no way you can say to me that you can prove in any point, in any place, that worshiping God alone will end one in eternal destruction. That is why Islam is the only pure monotheistic religion on the face of the planet Earth today. Mm -hmm. Because we worship God alone, singularly, uniquely, onely, and we don't worship anything else other than Him. We make that distinction that there is a creator and then there is the creation, and those two are not the same. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's really amazing because a lot of times uh, religion has been left to something that is esoteric for many people. It's just mysterious, but then it, it's not supposed to make sense a lot of times. You know, it's yeah. uh, uh, you can't understand God, but here you're talking and it's kind of like, hold on, this is too simple. It's, it's, just, it's common sense. Is it supposed to be that simple? It's but it supposed is. to be that simple because God is just. Therefore, if, if religion was esoteric and only able to be understood by enlightened minds, then what about the rest of the unenlightened world? They mm -hmm. don't have access to God. God is supposed to be readily accessible to anyone with any capacity of understanding. Even the person with the most diminished capacity of understanding can understand the concept that there's one God. There's no more else. There's nothing else. There's one. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple concept to understand. But you try to explain the concept of, of uh, you know, uh, paganism, many gods and all these warring gods, or even the concept of the Trinity. You know, that there is one God who's in three unique personages. These personages are all the same person, but they're not the same person. And they're, they're equal, but they're not equal. Even my own daughter at nine years old would look at me and be like, that makes no sense. As Jesus grew up, he learned more and more about God. His... Jesus is God. How can he learn more and more about himself? Because Jesus is God. That's a great question, then. So how can you learn more and more about himself? Because it said, Jesus grew up. He learned more and more about God, his father. Well, because when Jesus came down to earth, um, he grew up as a regular human being, too. So he would read the, the Bible and that kind of thing. So he would learn more and more about himself? <laughs> she heard me doing... She heard me doing my Why I Left Christianity because it's in, in, in my basement. She heard me. She was like, did you just say that God was three and one and one and three, but they were all the same and not the same? I was quoting the Apostles' Creed that, the fa that God the Father is God the Son and God the Son is God the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is not the Father the Father. She was like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I know it doesn't. This is not how the religion to worship God and, and the path to heaven is supposed to be. It's supposed to be simple. You worship God and you try to do what's right. That doesn't mean by doing what's right, you're going to go to paradise, but that's how you earn the forgiveness of God. Now, you can't give all of your sins to one person and have them all wiped away. Because if that was the concept, why can't I do that in, in any other thing? Why can't I go to a criminal court and say, you know what, Jesus died for my sins, you know, 2,000 years ago. I don't know why I'm even up here. I should not even be being tried for this. You can't do that. It does not work that way. So we know logically it doesn't work. Therefore, it's not going to work in the day of judgment in front of God either. Wow, subhanAllah. This is uh, really, how, how have you kept such a longevity now? Many people, you know, it's been, like you just mentioned, 17 years. It just passed like that. Yep. 
Uh, what do you even do to get people to thinking? Uh, like you just said, uh, most people are leaving. A lot of even Christians are getting fed up uh, with the church because they're seeing a lot of compromise. They're yep. seeing people compromising. They're getting fed up. And some are even because of that gravitating towards Islam. They're yeah. saying, you know, that Islam, we can see, you know, it's starting to make sense why Islam is so... Um, the, the purity as far as like keeping certain things and certain lifestyles that are there that are unacceptable and that God has to be obeyed. It's clear you can't, you know, compromise in your faith and people, they start to respect that, especially what's going on with whole, this whole gender fluidity and uh, trying to I, sexualize identity children. Identity politics. Yeah, all of this. Well, that's one of the fatal flaws within Christianity, and this is not to take a dig at anyone, it's just this is a fatal flaw within the system. One of the fatal flaws in Christianity is there's no, there's no code, there's no creed. If you say you believe in Jesus having died on the cross for your sins, then you're a person of paradise, like you're going to heaven. No matter what else happens in your life, mm -hmm. you're still saved. And, and that becomes very problematic because it allows a lot of fluidity, it allows you to compromise on a lot of things that you normally wouldn't compromise on. With it, whereas within Islam, we have a, a coded system of how we are supposed to apply the religion within our lives. Therefore, we can, there are certain boundaries we cannot go past. And if we do go past them, it's considered like a mortal sin, you know what I mean, in front of God. And therefore, Muslims are, it, the world is very quickly finding out, especially with the World Cup and all that that happened around the World Cup. The world is, 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 is very quickly finding out that Muslims are some of the last holdouts of principled religion. That's what I consider Islam, a principled religion. Every other religion has its, you know, its, its loopholes and once saved, always saved. I don't really have to do anything, I just have to believe. In Islam, it's a principled religion because we not only believe certain things, but we have to do certain things and we have to stay away from certain things in order to, to live a righteous life. Mm -hmm. So we are one of the very last principled moral holdouts on the planet Earth wow. today. Yeah. Uh, did you get a chance to see, it seems like when, um, since you mentioned the um, World Cup, with, mm -hmm. uh, you had Morocco who was coming close, and then you had Muslims who were throwing up, just like you had the famous fighter Habib, he would yep. be pointing up, yep. and this signifies the pure monotheism that we're talking about, that Jesus was upon, and all the prophets, one, one God, the pure monotheism, mm -hmm. Tawheed. And then, you had the Moroccan players prostrating, prostrating not down. only when they won, but when they lost. But then you had this uh, German outlet, I don't know if you've seen, they were trying to come aboard and say, look, they're, they were trying to connect the, uh, the uh, team to this group Daesh. And they yeah. were saying, did yeah. you see, did you yeah. see that? Well, they you say know? it's an ISIS symbol. Yeah. <laughs> well, how would you respond to that? Because so, they were throwing up the, so that means Habib and all the Muslims in the world, us, we're throwing up one, one God. Jesus would have been throwing up one God. They're all, how low can you go? These are coming from people who don't even, who can't define genders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They can't tell you what a male and female where, is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I don't really. What do you expect? From what them? do you expect from these type of people? You know what I mean? Their 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 identity politics are the flavor of the week. Mm -hmm. It's like going to Baskin Robbins. You yeah. know what I mean? Which some people might be watching not know what Baskin Robbins is, but it's a, a ice cream store here in America where you can go in. There's like 32 flavors. You know, yeah, and they yeah. have a flavor of the week. That's it. You can go in and just pick whatever flavor you like today. And uh, for Muslims, we can't do that. We have principled, and, and the most, the number one principle in Islam is Tawheed. Mm -hmm. That's it. You cannot worship anything other than God. Like everything else is forgivable. In the Quran, it says that God forgives all sins. Like I, literally anything else is forgivable, except for worshiping something other than Him. That is where Muslims become so principled. And, and, and no matter what else we might do, because you can't judge a religion based on its adherence. That's, that's, that's just common sense to not do. But our principles is that any Muslim you go to that is, is a practicing Muslim, you'll ask them, what is your belief? I believe in one God. That's it. It's simple. I, I believe in one God. There is no, there's no way to confuse that principle. And that is where we have to make our stand, is that we are principled people who believe in one God and we follow what He wants us to do. That's it. Hence the, the that's one. That's it. It means Hence one. one. Yeah. That's it. And then uh, from there you it's, see... It's a, it's a symbol of, of saying one, ahad. Yeah. Or, or, or wahid or, or ashad in the Hebrew language was what Jesus would have said. Yeah. You had so many people now, they were 
for years being bombarded with all the negative hype, they went down to this part of the world and you can hear them testifying that, you know, the hospitality, the kindness, and then also seeing, you know, the Muslim players, you know, you see them, uh, one in particular, he's hugging his mother, you know, yep. the respect to parents and we don't really, you're starting to lose that in uh, this part yeah. of the world. Yep, and, and, it's, and it's sad that there's going to be, such, you know, there's such long periods of time before the next World Cup. Because if it was like maybe next year or two mm -hmm. years from now, it's hosted here next time. You know that. It's no, coming I mean, to America. Yeah? Yeah, it would be nice to see if you so put that side by so, side to yeah. see the difference. That, that'd be really nice to this, see, right? The, how much of a difference is going to be from, so, let's say somebody went to the World Cup in Qatar and yeah. now go to the World Cup in America and tell me the, the difference between the two experiences. Because I don't know what city, they haven't decided what city's going to host it yet, yeah. but America has it next. Yeah, because just from, you know, the the prohibition of uh, alcohol, yep. restricting it there, people were actually like, you know, less the segregation. violence, the segregation, yes, well, even women, women from having their own, their own interests to with go it, into yeah. and be, be patted down by females and Is not that, have men groping all over you. Uh-huh. There was even a, that one reporter for Fox News that was very irritated about yes. having to go through... It's like you want to be groped by strange men. Like mm -hmm. that's the type of idea that you're portraying. Like I want to go in a line. Yeah. Like I think of my own daughter. Like would I want my daughter to go in a line yeah. with men who I don't know what they are, what they're thinking, what their intentions are, feeling all on my daughter. Like, and they call that freedom. They call that freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's it's just it's like they want us to believe white is black, black is white, night is day, day is night. Yeah. And this was also a, a, a prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that towards the end of times, things would become flipped. The truth would be known as falsehood, and the falsehood would be known as truth. The liar would be known as the truth, and the truth would be known as a liar. You wouldn't know what's right and what's wrong, because they would flip. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's happening now. To be a principled, moral person is you're the bigot, you're the racist, you're the this. But, you know, I mean, if I'm just kumbaya with anything and everything, oh, this is an enlightened person, a moderate, mm -hmm. a progressive. Yeah. That's progressive. That's, that's, I don't see progression in that. SubhanAllah. So it's uh, good spending a little bit of time with you. Always a pleasure. You're, you're going to be uh, doing a tour in UK, right? Yes. If people want to come see you down there? Two months. I will be posting the, uh, the, the, the tour schedule shortly, inshallah. Yeah. All over the UK. Alhamdulillah. Well, uh, look forward to, inshallah. Look forward to having it. you back uh, in Florida. Get back here in this nice, as everybody can see, we have the palm trees and the yeah. nice weather. We got, and tomorrow I'm going to be going back and shoveling snow. Yeah, so inshallah, as we, as we establish now the more Dean Center, inshallah, I got an excuse more to come out here, the, more, the warm weather. Inshallah. Look forward to it, inshallah. Yeah, Jazakallah. Thank well, you, yeah, my brother. Always my pleasure, brother. Likewise, Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I am here in Tampa, Florida, in front of the future Dean Center, which would be the first mega Dawa center in America. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has privileged you and I with the truth. And this is an opportunity for us to do a prophet's work and earn a prophet's reward. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that this is a matter that will reach every home and now is your opportunity to be involved in such a thing that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prophesized which will impact hundreds and millions of people and generation after generation to come. Donate right now, click the link below. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reward all of you.